Let's look at cluster sampling and why sometimes it can be a dangerous thing to do. Whenever you are looking at clusters, you need to be careful of how the clusters are mixed. So you can see up on top here, uh, it might be a little tough to see some of the colors, but there's a variety of colors that are kind of well mixed uh, up in here. Any given group is going to give you a few purple, a few blue, a few green, a few red, and so forth. Down below, these groups are not so well mixed. This one has you know, a couple purple and blue and green, but pretty much mostly red. This one mostly purple and this one mostly blue. So if you are looking to ask only a single cluster or only maybe two clusters, uh, and you want that data to represent everyone, doing so with a well mixed group should work out okay. But if you only take this group, you're going to get a very purple dominated uh, perspective on things. So you need to make sure that if you're doing a cluster sample, each of your clusters, each of your groups are well mixed and have a good, uh, a good mix of everyone. Once you, uh, once you decided how your clusters are picked and you decided that they're all fairly well mixed or heterogeneous groups, then you could use an SRS or a systematic sampling technique to choose which clusters to ask. So if I wanted to, let's say, ask three clusters, I might number them 1 to 18. And I'll just go up to 6 here. But you can go all the way to 18. And then randomly generate a number. And let's say I get the number 3. And then I get the number 11. And then I get the number 13. So if I wanted to randomly select three clusters, I would generate three random numbers, and that would be the people that I would interview, is the people from each of these clusters. Another way I could use systematic, so let's say I generated the random number three, and every sixth of the group I'm going to interview. So in which case, it would be this group, this group, and this group here. And so these three would form my sample.